The Kira Pentecostal Empowerment Ministries International of 27 McDonald Street, Kira, Trinidad, West Indies presents Empowerment Through the Word. Come with us as we affect humanity with the life transforming power of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We invite you to stay tuned and be blessed. and say now Praise the Lord. What a God we serve. This is the day that the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and to be glad in it. And through Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Thank you this morning again for the privilege of coming into your homes, into your cars, into the hospitals, 
into those centers where you feel hemmed in, where you are isolated. Oh, praise be unto God. He's promised to be with us always. It doesn't matter where you are. Hallelujah. Of course, this program comes again intending to cause us to trust again and to hope again and to forgive again and to love again and to call upon God again for his healing and his deliverance and for his strength and for his wisdom. Yes, so I've included a prayer there already. Call again. Pray without ceasing. Blessed be his wonderful name. I want to thank the many of you who continue to say that the program is a blessing to you. Praise be unto God and do continue to pray for us. And I know that you can, I want to thank for the many of you who are supporting, continue to do so. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 10. I want to thank the congregation. I want to thank the, the, the men's ministries. You continue to do your part. Yes, by giving out a number of hampers. Thank you. Thank God for the leadership there as you continue to forge ahead as we work together for the advancement of his kingdom. The Lord bless you and your whole soul. Keep on praying and keep on believing. I want to continue this morning on resurrection living you see it's not just an event yes up from the grave he arose and we sing and that's it no it's more than that it's the life resurrection living i i emphasize the importance of a fresh start let me read the same text the same text Luke chapter 22, from verse number 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, talking about Peter, same Simon Peter, Behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you or prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren and he said unto him that Peter Lord I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death and he said I tell thee, Peter, the cock, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. In other words, you're going to deny me three times. Right there and then. And of course, Peter did it. It came to pass. Because Jesus said so. And Jesus is always right. Hallelujah. But resurrection living. Then I, I want to put uh, another verse in there. Reading from First Peter, of course, he's the man that the Spirit of the Lord used to put together First Peter and Second Peter. First Peter chapter 5 tells us something there. But the God of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. 
What a powerful verse. After thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Resurrection living. What does it mean to us? What should it mean to us? We understand that resurrection not only gives us the power to change, but it is about change itself. Resurrection power, it is not just only giving us the power to change, but it is change itself. It is starting afresh. You would have heard that already. It gives us a new identity and new hope. The resurrection is. That's right. The resurrection is. Life is. Fullness of life. It is. For when someone can claim to be God, a man claims to be God rises from the dead. <laughs> I tell you, life must never be the same again. It is a fresh start. All our lives long for. And I tell you, what has happened to us and continues to happen all over the world, I am sure for us all, life will never be the same again. We continue, we will certainly think our particular way. We will do what we must. Resurrection life then has to do with intimacy with him resurrection life and living intimacy with God hallelujah John 15 1 to 5 Jesus said I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman every branch in me that bear it fruity Purge it. But every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he will, he will cut it off. Because he is the true vine. And as believers, we need to be making disciples, showing ourselves in a way that God will be pleased with us. And doing that which will bring honor and glory to his name. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. Because you are asking according to the will of God. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, then we have the petitions that we desire of him. Resurrection living should bring about an intimacy with him. Then, resurrection living should cause us to experience fullness of life. John fifteen sixteen. You did not choose me, Jesus said, but I chose you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it unto you. Resurrection living then should cause us to understand the victories that are ours. Victory on every front. Romans chapter 8 verses 35 to 39. What do we find there? 
Oh, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You see, it is about understanding who you are. I spoke earlier about a new identity, a new hope. So resurrection life should cause us to want to go to the next level. You think you're doing well? Well, there's always a better place. There's always a place that you could get to. Yeah, where it will cause us to, to stretch ourselves. Notice what he said to Peter. Satan desired to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. So resurrection life causes us to come back to the Father. Resurrection life then should cause us to love God in such a way that we become obedient to Him. It is obedience. So many times we've, we've gone astray. We've sought to do our own thing. And we realize that we have failed and failed miserably. Resurrection life brings us back to obedience to Him. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9 and verse number 23, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. He also mentions in Mark, the first chapter, the 16th and 17th verses. Here's what he says. He says, come ye after me and I will make you to become, to become fishers of men. I will make you resurrection living. Life for us should never be the same again. It must not be business as usual. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse number 19, Because I live, you shall live also. Resurrection living also causes us and should cause us to understand the time. It is the time for significant life changes. It is the time for significant life changes. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 10. The Apostle Paul reminds us. He says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And as I labor, my labor is not, I'm not laboring in myself, but I'm laboring with the grace of God because of the grace of God working in me. I am glad this morning because of rever resurrection life, you continue to experience His grace. It is indeed, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10 brings us to that place. His grace is indeed sufficient for us. For our, for His strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. Glory be to God. Resurrection life. What do we find also? We must affirm by our lives that Jesus is alive. Because resurrection living causes that. 
we must affirm this thing. How do we do it? According to Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, what? Let your light so shine. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 16. Let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven or who is in heaven. So, resurrection life is not out of, we're not living it out of who we are. No, 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 no. But we're living it out of what he has made us. What we have become. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So flowing out of that peace with God, we can afford now to help men and women, boys and girls, to come to know Him, to come to trust Him, to come to believe in Him. Resurrection living. Resurrection living causes us to become bold. Look at the life of Peter after coming back to Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible reminds us in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 13, when they saw Peter and John and, and the disciples, they, they recognized, very, very, very important, they recognized that they had been with Jesus. What a powerful testimony. Hallelujah. Resurrection life. Oh, that should cause us to understand that God cares about us so much that He was able, He's willing and ready to give us a second chance. And I'm speaking to some of you this morning who say, Pastor, I have gone too far. And I say to you, no. The fact that you can recognize that, it means that you can come back to him. When you are converted, strengthen the birdwing. In fact, God intends to make you a blessing if you would only come back to him this morning. Because it is his will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Will you this morning trust him? Will you call upon him this morning? Peter failed the Lord. But you this morning, because of what is available, you would have done it too. We've all, at some time and some point in our lives, fail him, but you could come back. Doesn't matter where you've been to, you can come back. And I'm seeing this morning that the goodness of God and the long suffering of God and the forbearance of God should lead us to repentance. Hallelujah. He wants to bless your life this morning. He wants to give you a purpose for living. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have towards you. Plans of good, good plans to give you hope and an expectation, to give you life, to cause you to move to the next level, to give you a vision. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we find what Peter now, Peter is speaking here, the Holy Spirit using him in 1 Peter chapter 5. When he speaks about uh, clothe yourself with humility, he understood the importance of walking in the grace of God. So he says here 
in First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. In fact, prior to that, he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may, be, whom he may devour, whom we just steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Doesn't that sound like what, I, what we read before Luke 22, 31 to 34? And then here's what he says here. Here's what the Holy Spirit directed him. He knew where he came from. He says, but the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternity, eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that you have suffered a while make you perfect establish strengthen settle you as a man knows of the grace of God this morning this grace is extended to all of us would you capitalize on it? Will you take advantage of it for the glory of God? Don't receive it in vain. Call upon Him now. Will you do that? Hallelujah. He's saying this morning, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light pray with me this morning please oh God I come to you this morning just as I am. Thank you for sending Jesus. He paid the price by dying on the cross for my sins. He was buried, but he rose again the third day to give me a fresh start, a new beginning, a new identity, new hope. Forgive me now of all my sins. Wash me in your precious blood, Jesus. Come into my life now and save me. I confess you now as my Savior and as my Lord. And I believe in my heart that you are alive and alive forevermore. So thank you now for saving me and writing my name in your book of life. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, you are saved. Welcome to the family of God. Let me pray with you now. Thank you, Father, for those who've prayed that prayer. I pray your continued revelation of yourself to them now. I rebuke sicknesses and diseases. I rebuke the spirit of fear and panic and I lose the power, the wisdom and the protection of God upon you and your whole soul now. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Well, the Lord richly bless you. Remember, we are not going under. No, no, no. Why? Because Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Lord richly bless you and your household. Have a great week. Amen and amen.